CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The theme of our tale is temptation. It comes in many sizes and many forms. Its consequences are always the same. They vary only in degree. If you give in to temptation, you acquire a secret, and it possesses you, nags at you, and lies there, waiting to be exposed. The fact is, we often want to confess it to get rid of it. That's conscience at work. Confession may be good for the soul, and a long stay in prison... We're in a tavern in a dusty little village in southeastern New Mexico. If you could get him out on the river, Millie, that old Rio Grande... Would... Scrub it, Walt. Oh. Ben wouldn't take me fishing. No way. You leave it to me. I'll get him worked up real good one of these days, and he'll have the big one. Tonight helped. I wish he'd drop dead. That's the idea, darling. Our mystery story, alias Mr. Aladdin, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars John Beale and Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you're a regular listener, you know that our entertainment focuses on suspense or the supernatural. Sometimes it might concern itself with a phenomenon such as thought transference, or sometimes simply murder. Hopefully the murderer is caught. There are many ways of committing murder. One of them is shock. Very effective when, for example, the younger wife of a man in his 60s knows his condition and wishes him dead. The man's name is David McNell. Please, Mildred. Please, my foot. I made your supper and I'm going out. It's humiliating to me, Millie. Can't you understand that? You're my wife. I'm your housekeeper and cook, not a wife. And I'm still young and good looking. You expect me to sit in the house every night, look at the television, and watch you fall asleep at 10 o'clock? <laughs> I realize. You that. don't realize anything. I'm still alive. And I'm as good as dead. You said it. I didn't. But to go unescorted to that tavern and... Unescorted. That's the laugh. You're living in another world, old man. Women are free today. I could take you to the tavern. Please, Dave, don't be ridiculous. The noise would give you a stroke. No, you just settle back in your lounge chair and watch the tube or read a nice book about the good old days or go play cards with your buddy across the street. You're still seeing Walt Hollins. Why not? Who else is there to talk to in this desert dump? He's still crazy about me, and he's a good dancer. And a bum. But he's a man. No, not by my standards. Ben Baker's had him in court four or five times. Ah, uh, your buddy's a county prosecutor. I wouldn't give him the time of day. Honest Ben and his stuck-up daughter. I can't stand much more of this, Mildred. Well, you're stuck, old man. Until death us do part, or doth us, or however it goes. I wonder why I married you. You didn't. I married you. Remember me 20 years ago? I wish I didn't. It should have been obvious then why you married me. Right. Money. All that money you get twice a month down at the bank, year after year, out of the blue... You never told me where it comes from. And I never will. Just keep it coming in. And if it stops... I'd still have my fine house. No, our house. Not ours for long, David. Listen, you call Walt Hollins a bum. Sure, he's been picked up on a few charges, but he's open. He's out front. You're not. You're close. You've always been a kind of Mr. Nobody from nowhere. Meaning just what? There's some secret about you. 
Twice a month, you go to the bank and get your money. But all you do is put five or ten bucks in savings. Then you come home and you got a wad. That's what I mean. Where does it come from? <laughs> I've got a lamp. Uh-huh. Without a bulb. Mm, that's right. No bulb. An Aladdin's lamp. And there's a genie in it. Ah, you're crazy. What? Well, don't tell me that's... That's Walt. Why not? Well, have fun with your genie. You know where I'll be. I'll do it. I have to do it. I can't live like this. I'd rather die in prison. It's shameful, Pop. They drove off and Dave came out of the house. He just stood there kind of hunched over. I saw the whole thing when I turned off the kitchen light. Well, nothing we can do about it, Ann. Mildred's always been an alley rat. Walt Holland's even worse. I wish she'd married him before Dave settled here. By now, we'd be rid of both of them. They hang out at the tavern. I've been there with John, and we've seen them. Mildred still thinks she's a movie star. John coming over tonight? No. He telephoned. He's tutoring some boy. He does a lot of tutoring, you know. I do know. And I'm saving as much as I can, but nurses don't earn very much. I can help, Anne. No, Pop. The house, I... No, and double no. I won't have you mortgage the house to give John and me a stake. We'll make it on our own. But when? Two, three years? You'll be stuck in this little village forever. You haven't found life here so bad. You're an attorney and county prosecutor. And there isn't much law business, and the prosecutor job just about pays for my shotgun shells. I'm not complaining, Ann, because I chose to stay here. Your mother and I were born in this village. She always loved the desert. And I still like the hunting and fishing in the Rio nearby. You had a good life. Oh, I think so. Nope, here's where I'll stay. But you and John are just itching to begin life in Santa Fe, and I really would like to... I'll see. No, I'll get it, Pop. Hi, Dave. My beautiful goddaughter. Come in. It's Dave, Pop. Oh, I'm glad to see you, friend. I, uh, saw your light on. And, uh... You're always welcome here. Sit down, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I suppose you saw or heard what happened. I did, Dave. I saw them leave. I'm a very poor excuse for a man, I'm afraid. Why don't you leave her, Dave? I've just about come to that decision. It's funny you're suggesting it, Ben. Well, your situation is intolerable. It's a peculiar situation. I have no feeling for Mildred. You know how she feels about me. I really wouldn't mind if she and Walt Hollins just disappeared. What's intolerable is... How they flaunt me. If I had your money, Dave, I'd do the disappearing. Well, that's easier said than done. I have my genie to consider. Your genie? Mm -hmm. You know about Aladdin, man? <laughs> sure. He rubbed his magic lamp and the genie granted him what he wished for. Well, the genie likes it here. What the devil are you talking about, Dave? You all right? Oh, sure, of course. It's just a joke. Well, you're being mighty mysterious, friend. This Aladdin thing didn't just bump into your head just now, did it? Well, no, no. I tried it on Mildred just before she left the house. In connection with what? Money. What else? Oh, I see. When I settled here, I was quite a rich man. It's always bothered Mildred where the money came from. She asked me again tonight. So you told her about Aladdin and his magic lamp. Oh, I'd like to have seen the expression on her face. Score one for you. The score is lopsided in her favor, but I'm about to change all that. And about time. How, Dave? When you hear it, you won't like it. Now think twice before you think murder. I'm your friend, but I'm also the county prosecutor. Well, there's an alternative. You'll never think of it. I strolled over to discuss it with you, but... 
Now I've changed my mind about telling you. Because of Anne? I'll leave you and Pop if... Uh... No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with your being present, Anne, but it does have to do with you. I haven't been much of a godfather to you. What? You've been wonderful. I can remember my first communion and the bicycle you oh, gave me. Oh, that was me. my pleasure. But let me put it this way. Wait until I uh, consult my genie. Then I may have a nice surprise for you. <laughs> well, rub him right, Dave. Because what Ann and John need... Pop, is... please. Don't be crude. You need a steak, my dear. You let me talk to my genie and I'll see what can be worked out. Uh, now I've talked enough. Thank you for sanctuary. No, 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 no. I'll let myself out. Good night, Aladdin. Don't get your hopes up, Pan. Mm, but wouldn't it be wonderful? Sure, but did you take a good look at him? You're a nurse. What do you think? He was very pale and nervous. And talking kind of crazy. You know he's got a bad heart. I do know that. Well, don't count on him. I think my old friend's just about run out of time. Ah, maybe you're a bum, Walt, but you sure can dance. The old man said that. I'm a bum? Uh-huh. I ought to put him out of his misery. No rough stuff, lover. What time is it? Uh, 11.15. Oh, I better get back home. No, it's early, Millie. No, uh -huh. I owe him something. Yeah? What? He's sick. For all we know, maybe after you honked for me, went into his room and passed out. <laughs> Ain't that just what we're waiting for? Just give it time. It's all gonna be mine one of these days. You've been saying that for a year, Millie. What's the rush? Well, it, uh, makes me feel funny. Us seeing out in the open all the time. Kind of a cheap shot, the old man. I feel bad about it. You? You said you wanted to put him out of his misery. I do. I want him dead. Or you to divorce him. Oh, boy. You'd still have a swell house. You could sell it. No. Me. I want the money, too. I want everything. He's rich, all right. Since he came back here 20 years ago, he's never done a lick of work. Where's the money come from, Millie? Oh, don't think I haven't tried to find out. He goes to the bank and he comes home with enough to choke an alligator. Maybe he keeps it in a safe deposit box, huh? Try again. I've looked. I have watched him for as long as we've been married, and I still don't know. I never really knew anything about him. Blackmail? Maybe he gets money through the mail and pretends he gets it from the bank. I open all the mail, Walt. Nothing. And he can't get it from the bank. There's only a thousand in savings. Well, then he's got it squirreled away somewhere. It comes from somewhere. I've searched... This time, I'll help you. Let's do it now. Why not? Take me home, Walt. Man! Man! Anne! Help me! Who is... Uh, Dave! Pop! Hurry! Dave! Dave! Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. Now, don't talk. Hold on to my arm. Oh, Trevor. Look at him. That cut on his cheek needs stitching. Who did this, Dave? Uh, there was a quarrel. I'll tell you all about it later. Mildred? He, he went crazy. Began to rip the house apart. Millie and Wolf? Uh, yeah, yeah. I tried to stop them. Next thing, I was on the floor. I came to and staggered over here. Get the car, Pop. We'll take him to the clinic. I'll string Walt Hollins from a lamp boat. Oh, man, and my heart's going like a trip hammer. I, I think I'm going to faint. Temptation. It encompasses many motives. Money is a primary one. The temptation to get something for nothing is a regrettable human weakness. Once you give in to it, you're trapped. If the law doesn't trip you up, your conscience will. Mildred McNell's abuse of her husband just may have killed him before she discovers the source of his wealth. I'll return shortly.
with Act Two. There's an old Moroccan proverb: "The cold teaches everyone to steal charcoal." Here we have a situation that is analogous. A venal woman marries an older man and now wishes him dead because then she will inherit his money and marry a man her own age. But there's a problem: how can she come into the money when she cannot discover its source? And what is that source? It's now the next morning, and Ann Baker has driven David McNell home. Coming, Dave? I suppose so. I'll see you into the house. No, I'm all right now, Ann. You lie down for the rest of the day. I'll call after work to see how you are. It was just a scratch. Ten stitches aren't just a scratch. Oh. There's Millie. Well, well, well. So there you are. Hey. What happened to your head, old man? Walt Hollins will have to explain that to my father, Millie. What do you mean? Pop is picking up Hollins for assault. Are you crazy? He didn't assault nobody. Go oh, home, oh, man. Tell your father to proceed. What is all this? What's the old man been telling you? Last night, you and Walt walked in and began to rip the house apart. When Dave interfered, Walt slugged him and knocked him down. That's a lie. And so are these ten stitches, Mildred. Walt didn't touch you. You fell down and hit your head on the television set. You, you believe this crazy old man? A lot sooner than I'd believe that Walt Hollins. And run along. I'll check in after work. You try it. This time you've gone too far, Mildred. I want you out of here. Well, do you now? Just like that, huh? Well, I'm here and here I'm staying. If anybody's leaving, it's going to be you, feet first. You're counting on that, I know. Uh, then I'll leave. Without me and my money, you won't last six months in this house. This is a common property state, old man. You may have the house. There is nothing else. Oh yeah, money. Half goes to me. There is none. There's plenty, and you know it. And you'll produce it, or you'll go to jail. What if that's what I've got in mind? You got nothing on me, Baker. Mister Baker, to you, Holland. You got nothing on me. Has McNeil filed a charge? He'll do what I recommend. The charge is assault. Well, I just pushed him, and he fell. In his own house. I was there because his wife asked me. You know, of course, that David McNeil has a heart condition. Well, it's lucky for you and that wife of his that he didn't die. Or you'd be up on a charge of murder. The deputy will drive you to the county seat. You better get yourself a lawyer. I wish I could explain an animal like that. And Millie, she's another. They came from poor family. Hogwash. So did I. No, Ann, they walk a crooked line. They always have. They should be here by now. Did you see him after work? I tried. Millie wouldn't let me in. Oh, boy. Well, you run along. I'll wait outside for John. Don't be too late, dear. Have a nice visit with Aladdin. Hi, Dave. You all right? Sure. Pop, in the room on the porch. Uh -huh. Oh, come in, Dave. Put your feet up. Uh, just for a minute. How's the forehead? Uh, it hurts, but it's all right. Ben, what do you know about me? <laughs> well, that's a funny question. We've been friends for almost 25 years. You ever wonder why I settled here? Well, all of us did at first, but nobody pried. You said your health wasn't too good and that our climate was just right for you. I remember that. You know my relationship with Millie. She's a shrew. She sure is. Well, she hooked me with her pretty face and figure. <laughs> well, it's happened before. I or that. She really was beautiful, but... She's a cruel, grasping woman. Ben. Huh? My name isn't David McNell. Huh? It's... 
Neil Wheeler. Name mean anything to you? Can't say it does. <laughs> so much for fame. Now, here, I brought something to show you. A clipping. Uh, read it, man. What has become of Wheeler the dealer? You? A dealer? A dealer in what? Mm, anything. You name it. Now read on. Uh, disappeared. Receipt stolen. Contract on his life. Mob alert in every major city. You? Mm, me. I was part of a gambling syndicate. We were into everything. Entertainment, tables, real estate, travel. I was the front man. I spoke good English and I dressed like a banker. The rough boys stayed in the background. And then I got ambitious. You wanted a bigger take, is that it? That's right. That was a mistake. So you got out before they got you? With over $200,000, well over. I'd planned it for months. You sure you want to tell me all this, Dave? You know what I have to do. Turn me over to the police? That's right. You did abscond with money. How'd you get away with it? Oh, you can get away with anything if you prepare carefully enough. Well, that's what I did. Six months before I dropped out of sight, I'd prepared a new identity. One night, as usual, two bodyguards accompanied me to the bank to make a deposit of the night's casino receipts. I carried the money in an attaché case. And? In my office, I made a substitution. I had another attaché case. It was filled with very high-grade, worn, counterfeit money. It was on my way. And you've been a, a fugitive all these years? I still see faces in the dark, Ben. How much money you got left? Over 50000 Well, you'll have to turn it over to me, old friend. I want to. Where is it? Mildred's been trying to find out all our married life. She and Walt Hollins tried again last night. I'll bring it to you sometime tomorrow when she's out of the house. I don't want her to have a cent of the money. Well, all the same, you'd better tell me where it's hidden. I... If something happens to you, I... Dave... Dave, business again. Where's the money hidden? Uh... Tackle box. Huh? False bottom. The money's hidden in waterproof rubber envelope. I had it made. It, it says fly tying. Yeah. Yeah. Dave. Ben Barker, Grace. Find Dr. Jessup and have him come to my house at once. Emergency. I got here as fast as I could, Pop. How's Dave? Who's the doctor? Terry Richards. And the nurse is Tina Wheeler. Couldn't reach Jessup. Then Dave's in good hands. What happened, Pop? Dave had another of those dizzy spells, and then he passed out. The telephone operator, Grace, located Richards, and he rushed to the house. We got Dave into the station wagon, brought him here. Heart? Yeah, but Dave's also showed signs of stroke. Go in and find out how he is, and they won't tell me anything. Right away. It was those stitches. He was badly shaken up. Walt Hollins is responsible for Dave's condition. If he dies... There's nothing I can do to Hollins. Dave never brought a charge against him. Hollins will go free. But he and Millie... I know. They're as good as murdered, Dave. And they'll get away with it. Now, please go and see Anne. I have to know what's happening. I won't be long. He's pale as the sheets, Anne. Coronary thrombosis. Blood pressure way down. Poor Aladdin. Can he survive? Dr. Richards doesn't think so. That's the only reason he let you in to see him. How long do you think, Ann? Minutes. Maybe hours. No one can tell. Why don't you go home? I'll telephone if there's a change. No, no, I'll stick it out. Does his wife know? By George, no. I never think of Dave's having a wife. I suppose I'd better break the news to her. Do you want me to telephone her? No, thank you. I... I'm Dave's executive, you know. There, there are certain things I have to attend to. He, he left a few personal things to me. Mm -hmm. 
Aladdin's lamp. You never can tell. I think he'd want me to have it, don't you? Well, the big lawman himself. I don't want any, thank you. What are you doing here? You know what time it is? Late. Where's Dave? At the clinic. I see. What happened? You beat him at gin rummy and he flipped out? He's dead, Millie. Comes as no surprise to me. Being slugged by Walt Hollins didn't help much. He didn't slug him. He pushed Dave out of the way. Sure, sure. No matter now. He's dead. Okay. So you've told me I'll handle this. You run on home, get your sleep. You know, I'm executor of Dave's estate. Oh, yeah? What's he need an executor for? What's his is mine. No big deal. Well, Dave left a few personal items for me. I'll come by later and pick them up. You just think you will. You get nothing from this house, Mr. Baker. Then I'll get a court order and prevent the estate from going to probate until you give me what Dave wanted me to have. You got them personal items written down in writing? Yes, I have. Then you just show me where Dave says you get this and that and I'll see. It's got to be in writing. Otherwise, it's just your word against mine. I'll stop by tomorrow. What personal items? Mostly books. Anything else? I'll show you the list tomorrow. Anything important? No. I don't believe you. I won't bother to answer that, Millie. Just don't touch anything in the house until I show you the will. You know something, don't you, lawman? Something mighty important. Sure you do. It's almost midnight, Pop. I know. I'm just sitting here thinking about Aladdin. How did charming Millie take the news? As expected. Said thank you and good night. She'll handle everything from now on. I telephoned the minister. Oh, that was thoughtful of you, Anne. There has to be a service. Everyone loved Neil we- David McNair. Who? Neil who? Uh, I was thinking of somebody else. A, a friend of mine when I was in my teens. Oh? An association of ideas. That boy died, too. I see. Hmm, sure. But I have... Uh... Felt that you were referring to Dave. Well, grief can play tricks. Mm-hmm. What's really on your mind, Pop? I feel kind of old. I've been running a long time. Maybe you were right when you said the time's come for me to sell the house and go to Florida. A stake for you and enough for me. This is kind of sudden. Well, it's been coming for some time. Dave's death tipped it. I have lost a, a very valuable friend. A valuable friend indeed. Our tale has become more entangled because of a secret confession. And temptation now invites honesty to look the other way. It comes down to which instinct is stronger. A philosophical problem. The dilemma for Ben Baker is what to do about the stolen money that Dave McNell has left to his discretion. We face that problem when I return with Act Three. Many eminent writers think that a man's fate is his character. You can get into all kinds of arguments about heredity versus environment, but neither can exclude the other. Essentially, we are what we come from. A lineage of honesty becomes a general characteristic of certain families. Ben Baker comes from one such family, and we're about to test character being fate. It is noon the next day, and Walt Hollins rings the doorbell at Millie's house. Well, if it isn't the village bad guy. Hi, Millie. I heard the news. Come on in. Uh, the county prosecutor had the sprung, and the 
charge against me dropped. Now, lucky for you, Baker's bad to tangle with. When's the funeral? No funeral. He's being cremated. There's a memorial service since Sunday afternoon. And the house is yours? Everything is mine. Well, you need his money to keep this place up. Yeah, don't I know it. But where is it? Where does it come from? It's got to be here somewhere. Well, he turned the place inside out the other night. I hear Baker brought you the news. Yeah, he said he's coming back for some things Dave's supposed to have left him. Huh? What kind of thing? Oh, books, junk like that. I told Baker where to head in. Yeah, but if the stuff's been given to Baker... If Baker shows me a paper saying Dave left him so-and-so, okay. Otherwise, the county prosecutor can go whistle. You know something, Millie? Go on. If Dave told anybody where his money came from, it'd be Ben Baker. They was best friends. Hey, yeah. That's a pretty good point. The money ain't in the bank, and it don't come through the mail... So it's cash, and it's somewhere right here in the village. And if anybody knows where, it's Baker. That makes sense. Why would Dave hide the money where you just might find it? Why wouldn't he hide the money at Baker's? Yeah, why not? If you're right, I'm sunk. Baker would never admit he had the money. But what if I found it for you? The house is empty all day long. He's at work and the daughter's at the hospital. Uh, what's wrong with that, huh? Nothing. That's wonderful. And funny. How? Stealing something that rightfully belongs to me. I'm home, Pop. Oh, d- did you come home earlier, Ann? Me? No. I've been on duty since 8 this morning. Why? Something wrong? I think somebody's been going through this house. What? Well, that's unheard of around here. Is anything missing? No, nothing valuable. A few newspaper clippings that I had in my roll top. Somebody went through that desk. What clippings? Oh, a few I cut out about a case that interested me. You were pretty distracted last night, Pop. Maybe you mislaid them. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. And something else. The carbon of a codicil to Dave's will. How strange. Yeah, isn't it? What's in the codicil? Well, it's a fake. I admit that. I wrote it to give to Mildred McNell. But that's illegal. I'm aware of that. The other night when Dave was here, just before he had another dizzy spell, he said if anything happened to him... There were certain things of his that he wanted me to have. Some books, his fly rod, fishing tackle, and his outboard motor. So? Well, that witch across the street won't let me have them. Then I'd forget about them. Well, that I won't do, even if I have to steal them. So you prepared a codicil? Yeah, well, that may not work anyway. She said she'd have to see what Dave gave me in his writing. You're the executor of Dave's estate. Well, it amounts to nothing at all. Everything goes to Millie. Can't you hold up probate until you get those things you want? It would be your word against hers about what Dave left to you. Yes, I mentioned that to her. And I'd win. Her word's good for nothing. Then handle it that way, for goodness sakes. Don't march in and grab the stuff. You've got time on your side, Pop. I wonder how much. Good evening. That's what you think. May I come in? I think you better. Walt's here. So much the better. Hi, Mr. Baker. You got that paper in Dave's writing about the stuff he left to you? I have. Let me see it. I think you've already seen it, Millie. You're off the rails, mister. And you've also seen something else, haven't you? Eh, uh, don't you browbeat her. Here's the original of the codicil. The carbon was stolen from my desk. Who'd steal you it? You would. Well, Walt here would steal it for you. Hey, are you accusing me? Certainly not. I have no proof. Well, what did you think of the clipping about Neil Wheeler, Millie? Don't answer him. Get a lawyer. Let him answer the question. A lawyer for what? How many persons do you want to know the story? 
You knew all the time, didn't you, Mr. Baker? Nearly. Well, shut up. Uh, Dave told me the night he died. I suppose I'm obligated to tell the police. The press will find out. It's a big story. Don't you dare tell the police. But you were married for 20 years to a very clever criminal. And the mob just might come looking for you. All that money. You got that money, Baker. Wrong. Then where is it? Well, you've searched your own house and someone's searched mine. Any luck? Apparently not. Help us find the money and I'll divide it with you, Mr. Baker. I'm afraid not. If the money ever is found, it won't be yours. Dave left you the house and nothing more. Well, give him the stuff. Sure. I got it all in the pile. You're a very clever housebreaker, Hollins. I'm admitting nothing. Here's the books, garage, backboards in the garage. Here's Dave's old tackle box. That's it. Thank you. That's it. And you were going to steal this if Millie didn't give it to you? Oh, Pop. The fly rod looks okay, but that tackle box is beaten up. No trouble with Millie? Nope. I can see why. Well, I wanted them for, well, sentimental value. I understand. Poor Mr. Aladdin. It'd have been upset you having to scrap with Millie. She won't be around for long. She'll have to sell. And then I would guess she and Walt will head for Santa Fe. And good riddance to both of them. Well, I'll put the books away. Do you want me to dump the tackle box in the garage? Uh, no, I might go through it later. See what Dave had that I can use. All right. See you in the morning, Pop. Good night. Aladdin's tackle box. Now, who the... You alone? Anne left half an hour ago. What can I do for you, Mildred? Come in. You can return what you took last night. I can. I mean, I, mean, I should? Why? After you left last night, Walt and me went down to the tavern. The two of you ought to buy it. We bumped into a friend who's a lawyer. He said you had no right to those things unless David put it in writing. He didn't. So, I want them back. Then I'll take you to court. So what? So, the entire story will come out. I told you what most likely would happen. The police... Oh, sure, sure. And the newspapers and the mob after me. Lies. Why are you making such a big fuss about nothing, Millie? Because the lawyer and Walt and me talked it over. And you know something? The lawyer's going to get it all out in the open. I was married to a crook and the crook's best friend was you. You, honest Ben Baker. You think anyone's going to believe you didn't know who Dave really was or where he kept his money? Oh, sure. My life gets messed up, but what about you? You'll be disgraced and ruined. And that's what you dearly love. Exactly. Well, your lawyer's right about one point. Until I can prove it, those items Dave left to me will have to be returned to you. You may have them. All of them. Even the books Dave borrowed with my name in them? Everything. Why? Because we think there's a clue in those things where the money is. Oh, wish I'd thought of that. Well, they're all yours, Millie. Did you get all the stuff back? It's all there in the middle of the living room. Nothing. What? Nothing in the books? No clue? The handle of the fly rod? No, and nothing in the tackle box except it smells of dead bait and fish. Hey, let me see the thing. Oh, don't be stupid. Who'd hide anything valuable in a tackle box? I never can tell. Hey, it's got a false bottom. What? Look, look, look. Look how it's disguised. See the tape wrapped around it like it's part of the design? Well, get it open. Look at that. It's about three inches from top to bottom. Hey, what's this? Look. 
It's a waterproof kind of briefcase with a zipper on. Walt! That's where the money was. Was? But it's empty. Baker walked out of here last night with the tackle box, took out the money, and that's why he let you take all stuff back this morning. Baker's got the money. And I'm left with... Oh, I'll claw his eyes out. Now, you'll just calm down. We can't prove a thing. You got taken, baby. And now you know everything, Ann. How much did Aladdin leave? A small fortune. A little over 50000 I wasn't going to tell you. I'm glad you did, Pop. What are we going to do about it? Well, it's money stolen from a mob. Illegitimate money. It doesn't belong to anybody. What about Millie? Well, she has the house. Aladdin meant this money for us. It'll set you and John up. You'll get most of it. I don't want much, just enough for Florida. What about your conscience, Pop? Can you live with it? Well, I'm sure going to try, my dear. I wonder, in a similar situation, what would you do? Return the money? To whom? To whom did it rightly belong? It was not stolen from a business, but from organized crime by one of its mob. You might perhaps make out a case for the wife, but that is not what David McNell intended. He indicated that as Ann Baker's godfather, he wanted to help her realize her dream. It's a tricky question. I'll have something further to say right after this. began with a theme of temptation, and we end with it. Even an entirely honest man can be tempted by the prospect of found money. Would he be a fool to turn it down? Ben Baker's rationalization is that he inherited the money from David McNell. That is what McNell intended. Well, you try to resolve the ethics. Our cast included Robert Dryden, John Beale, Roberta Maxwell, and Terry Keene. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'm a cost analyst. Offhand, I wouldn't think there's much call for that in Council Fox. Well, I, uh, I, I, I ought to know how to cook. Cook? Yes. I, 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 I'm a splendid amateur chef. You know something? I'm stunned. Oh? Some old lady was supposed to come up and keep house, but she never showed up. Now, how'd you like to stay here and cook? Uh, oh, oh, I don't... I got a whole bunch of stuff in the freezer, but I don't know how to boil water, and I'm starving to death. Oh, yes, but... But, uh, but you see, I'm, I'm really not interested in cooking. Um, so maybe if I could get my car started... You're I... not going anywhere. Uh, oh, what did you say? I said, you're not going anywhere. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.